Hey guys, welcome back to the channel today. I hope you can hear me okay. They just started, as soon as I put the camera on, they started the lawnmower. But I'm here in Westfield today and we're gonna be doing a, uh, we're gonna be removing a few circuits, I think six circuits from the main breaker panel over to a new main lug panel, which I'll be installing today. And then tomorrow we'll come back and we'll run a new circuit for an electric vehicle charger on the complete opposite side of the house. This will be an interesting job where we install PVC from the basement of this house up the side of the house and underneath the soffit to the other side for where they want to put the electric vehicle charger. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, welcome back and let's get started. So the first thing I need to do here is address this panel. It's completely full. It's a 200 amp main breaker panel, 40 circuit panel that was updated in the year 2000. And I know that it was updated in 2000 because that's when the approval inspection sticker on the panel says so as you can see here there's several circuits it's full and there's a couple square d home line circuit breakers inside this panel that needed to be addressed because uh, god forbid there was a fire and they find out that the wrong manufacturer circuit breaker was inside that panel you would have a problem this is a ge panel and so uh, i knew that there was a unlicensed electrician that had done some work here because I know that licensed electricians know better than to run three NM cables through one single connector. So I fixed that up for him here. And um, what I'm doing now is I'm marking the area, marking the studs on the wall in this finished basement to install a 20 circuit sub panel. Uh, in the trade, we call that a main lug only panel where we separate our grounds and neutrals. Anyhow, I'm marking using the blue masking tape where my framing members are and I'm going to draw a plumb line here with the level uh, right along the stud and then you'll see in a moment here I'll put the panel up to the wall and trace it out before cutting away the sheetrock to install the uh, panel. Now I'm not going to install the panel right away I still got to snake a few circuits from the main look uh, from the the main breaker panel and relocate them into this new sub panel so that I can have room for two things. I'm going to need room for the electric vehicle circuit, which is a two pole 60 amp circuit. But I'm also going to need to make room to supply power to this sub panel. So all in all, with the twin breakers and the the four circuits that I needed to relocate, I relocated five circuits into this sub panel right here to make room. Uh, to get that panel, the main breaker panel, back to full uh, without exceeding its, um, its breaker limitation. It's, uh, it takes up to 40 circuits and that's that. You can't put twins in there, it's not rated for it. So um, I actually put that in my report when I applied for the permit as well so that the inspector knew what he was looking at and why we put the main lug only sub panel in in the first place. Now right here, I, got a, I have an idea of what's behind the wall and it's exactly what I thought it was. It's all wooden frame with insulation behind this wall. <clears throat> so I'm gonna remove the sheetrock here and cut away that insulation so that I can have some room to maneuver to snake, I'm sorry, to fish my uh, steel snake up the wall to be able to relocate the, the five circuits that uh, I plan on relocating. So right here at the, at the moment here, I kind of have an idea what I want to do, but I don't know until I take, I don't know for sure until I take these uh, tiles out here from the ceiling to see what's what and what's gonna reach the new sub panel as far as the length of the circuits going into the main breaker panel. And I notice right away there's four, I'm sorry, five brand new or not too old yellow 20 amp circuits and I'm going to pull those back and they're going to reach, they're going to, we're going to fish those behind the wall and they're going to reach into the new sub panel. And you can see them right there. So the next step after that is to get inside the main breaker panel and start disconnecting some wires. Now when I was there, I told the homeowner that some of these circuits would be down for a few hours until I got this work done. Um, in all honesty, I knew it would take most of the day just relocating these circuits and supplying power to the new sub panel. Uh, and I had to get that done, obviously, before I left that night so I wouldn't leave this family without power to the home. So uh, that's what I worked on here on the first day. Now, what you don't see in the picture are the drop cloths, so I keep the mess down on the floor. There's three things that keep my business uh, flowing here. 
Uh, the three rules that I have for success are to show up on time, do what you say you're going to do, and make sure you clean up. So that's a big tent, but those three things in principle are what guides me uh, to become a success, successful contractor. So one of the things I need to consider as I'm removing these circuits from the main breaker panel is how I'm going to get my feeder into the main breaker panel from the sub panel. And uh, fortunately, these 12 wire circuits had a half inch KO with a concentric knockout. I was able to make larger to a three quarter inch to accommodate the 6-3 cable. Fortunately, every wire or every conductor in this panel here was from a non-metallic sheath cable or Romex cable. And it was pretty simple to work with. Um, I'm not using my cordless drill here. I'd rather use the hand tool number two drive uh, to back away the neutrals and grounds. And then also the circuit breakers have the same configuration lugs. So the nice thing about a suspended ceiling is obviously I got room. I got access to above the walls here. So what I'm going to do is I'm relocating four circuits, actually five circuits. I think I've already said that a few times. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to push a fish tape through the opening where I'm, the opening for the panel behind the sheetrock wall to the side of that window. And then I'm going to get up on a ladder. Actually, I'm going to stand on my pack, my large pack out case um, so I can reach. And then I'm going to reach in there for the fish tape and then pull it up to an accessible position. And then I'm going to tape the wires on the, uh, the Romex cables here. I'm going to tie those on to the fish tape and then pull them down into where the panel is going to go. This is the real challenge of the job right here because I wasn't sure how this was going to go, but I knew I'd be able to do it and no matter what it was. My biggest challenge was to make sure uh, when I pulled these cables back, I didn't have to make too many splices because if you've got to put all these in a box and then run new wiring down, it just takes a lot of time, uh, a lot of precious time, and that might be the difference from you know, getting done with this job at 3.30 like I did or being there until 6 o'clock. Uh, unfortunately, there was one circuit where I did have to put a junction box up on top of the ceiling, and that's because that was from a different part of the job. It was for a heat, a floor heat circuit, and uh, it just was not going to reach um, to the new sub panel. And I think that's what I'm working on now. I got the four circuits out of there, and three of them were in one Romex connector, so. That's how I know there wasn't a real electrician there. And all, the, other, the other clue was that they tied it on. They tied those new circuits into a square D home line circuit breaker inside this GE panel, which, of course, is a violation of the listing of the, 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 the breaker panel here. You cannot use a variety of circuit breakers inside the panel unless they're listed to be used inside that panel. And so I know this is a general electric panel, and the General Electric panel accepts only General Electric circuit breakers. And we've been over this before, how I feel about the uh, General Electric panels. But um, I don't think uh, changing this panel was necessary. I looked at the lugs going into the main breaker and, of course, all the grounding and everything looked legit and it passed inspection. But obviously, somebody had been in here after the inspection and did this work here. I don't know who and I don't really care who. I was just there to fix it and to get this new electric vehicle circuit installed. So that's what I did. So once I was done working inside the main breaker panel by removing those circuits, I wanted to put the panel cover back on. And the reason why I want to put the panel cover back on is so there's no accidents of the steel fish tape uh, making contact with the bus bar or making some kind of arcing sensation or doing any damage to the sheetrock or anything inside the home. So I put the panel cover back on just for safety. I decided I would take the fish tape and try to push it up, being that I wanted that end so I can attach the cables to the fish tape from the top. But of course that didn't work. So I probed and you'll see here in a minute, I eventually just uh, decided to push the fish tape down and then I got it on the first shot. So six half dozen the other. All right, so I pull it out. No, nope, I can't find it. I'm looking, I'm feeling. Got a little bit of space. There's a plumbing pipe there. I don't know. I guess that's going to the outside, though. 
but of course it was in my way from grabbing the fish tape, so I decided to push it down here, and then you'll see on the first shot, I reach inside the panel hole there and find it right away. Looks like it was meant to be. And so yes, now that the fish is in there, I cut the steel steak, the steel fish tape here. And uh, I would say I probably go to two or three of these fish tapes during the course of the year. Uh, sometimes they get stuck in the wall or something, or they get rusted. And I'm doing like a, huh, a bolt lift or something like that. So I got no problem cutting it when I need to, to do what I got to do. And then what I'll do is I'll keep this fish tape after I'm done using it here. And uh, it'll stay on the truck and then eventually this one will get cut. To make smaller pieces to do whatever the heck I got to do. And uh, so I use, usually use like two or three of these fish tapes every year. So you got to be real careful here not to damage, real careful here not to damage the suspended ceiling. Um, but you'll see here in a moment, I put some vinyl electrical tape around this, around these conductors and I pull it through. But then I realized later on, after I have the panel in, that I forgot the one cable that was short and I needed to take, so I need to take the panel back out and uh, fish another line in there. These are only four circuits and I wound up putting five in there. But you'll see that coming up shortly. So if you ever hear me use the term snaking, I understand that that's what plumbers do. They snake toilets and drains, that sort of thing. Waste pipes, I get it. But occasionally, I'll use the word snaking for fishing. And the electrical term is actually fishing. I get it. But I'll use the word snaking once in a time. And what I mean is I'm just fishing the wire through the wall here. So don't take that literally. Uh, <laughs> I use those words as if they're the same thing constantly. So just so you know, fishing is for pulling electrical cables and snaking is for plumbers but uh here i use those words all the time together as to mean the same thing and as you can see i get my wires there and now i'm looking to feel how i'm going to get my my uh feeder cable my 63 feeder cable which i forgot and i gotta run out to the store and go buy it i thought i had it on my truck but it wound up being 8.3 and so nobody might know the difference, but I'll know that it wasn't done the way I intended or the way I put in my proposal to do it the right way. So I wound up going to Powers Electric Supply and getting the right cable. So the 6.3 uh, non-metallic sheath cable here is actually good for 60 amps. And I say that it's actually good for 55 amps if you were to look in the 60 degree column of Article 310, or Section 310, TAC 14, I think that's where it is, or TAC 16. Um, the number 6 in the, in the Romex here is good for 55 amps, but we're able to put this on a 60 amp breaker because we're allowed to size up our circuit breakers depending on the ampacity if there's not a matching circuit breaker to match that ampacity. I hope I made that clear, make, that makes sense to you. Uh, but basically, if you have a 55 amp um, ampacity on the conductor, you round up to a 60 amp circuit breaker because they don't make, manufacturers don't make a 55 amp circuit breaker. So that's why we do that. And so now it's time to start putting this panel in, or so I thought. So there's four circuits here, and I got the fifth one hanging up above the main breaker panel up in the ceiling there that I need to extend, and I forget to do it. So what I wound up doing is using the two half inch knockouts and one three quarter and one half inch at the top of the panel here in the back for my feeder which is, is the supply to the main lug only sub panel and then the four branch circuits are the two in the back and then two in the bottom and the reason why I did that is so I wouldn't have to chisel away some of the finished sheetrock at the top or the bottom to fit the panel in place I hope that I hope I make sense with that if um, <clears throat> if I have a panel, if I have a wire coming into the top and to the bottom, the panel is not going to fit in the opening that I've cut out. 
So I need to just either choose the top or the bottom for all my circuits. And here I've just chose the bottom. Yeah, you can see it right there. To uh, I, what I did was I stuck the cables in through the enclosure. Then I came back later on with those white button connectors that I'm so fond of, made by Arlington, so that I could put the connector on after the enclosures inside the wall. And it looks beautiful. It looks fantastic. Except in a moment here, I'm going to look. I think I might be on the phone right here. Um, in a moment, I'm going to look at it and say, what did I forget? There's something wrong here. And I'm going to remember that I left a circuit above the panel and I need to take the panel back out to fish the other circuit in place before finalizing the uh, sub panel. Hey, we're all human and we all make mistakes. And uh, I read the comments and I see that you guys like when you see that I make a mistake that I go back to fix it. Yes, I know there are incompetent electricians out there that don't go back to fix it and just leave it and say, what the hell, that's not the way to be. Do it right the first time, guys. So what I'll do is I'll discover my problem and uh, I'll pull the panel back out, undo the screws to the framing members on either side and pull it out, fish the 12 wire up to where it'll meet the existing branch circuit above the panel here. And then we'll come back later and we'll put a junction box in. But for now, I just want to get this panel installed. Um, and I might have even done this before lunchtime, actually. I usually arrive to the job around 9 a.m. And uh, I think I got this done right before lunch. So uh, I wanted to be able to cut it in, put the circuit breakers in, and put the panel cover on and be done with that sub panel before lunch. And then I take my lunch break. And the rest of the day, I'm going to spend cleaning up and uh, attaching my main my uh, feeder to the breaker inside the main breaker panel. And then start working on the electrical vehicle circuit, which is what exactly happens. So being that this is a sub panel, we have a four wire feeder coming from the main breaker to the sub panel. We have a hot black, a hot red, we have a white neutral, and we have a a bare equipment grounding conductor. The bare equipment grounding conductor is a number 10 org, which is what the National Electric Code calls for as far as the size of the conductor for a 60 amp circuit such as this. So, and uh, being that this is a sub panel, we are going to isolate our equipment grounding conductors from our grounded neutral conductors. So there's no main bonding jumper in this panel. The main bonding jumper is only intended to be in the main breaker panel, which is to my right right there. So grounds and neutrals are isolated. We have 60 amps on each leg, supplying power to the bus bar for the circuit breakers. This would be a good time if you'd like this video to hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe and the notification bell. Thank you guys. As soon as the wiring for the sub panel is complete, what I need to do is I need to get that 6.3 cable into this main breaker panel. And it wasn't easy. And like I said earlier, I removed four number 12 cables, Romex cables, and one of those connectors had three cables going into the one connector. I removed that, so now I have one opening to get my feeder 6.3 into this panel. But like I said earlier, this is also a concentric knockout. So I need to make the knockout bigger. You can see the folded up metal right there. I need to get that out. And that's a tight spot to be in. There's not a lot of room. And fortunately, God gave me these big giant sausage fingers. So what I wind up doing is taking out my needle nose pliers. And with the needle nose pliers, I'm able to get in there and just rock back and forth and get that undone. Uh, but then the next challenge is actually getting a three-quarter inch connector into there. And then, of course, with all the wires and conductors in the way, you got to get the lock nut on. I got lucky here. I've been doing this for a few years now, remember. Uh, but this was a pain in the neck to get done, but I finally did get it done. And yes, just in case you saw that, 
the first connector in the front there, you can see the exposed conductors with the sheathing removed. I was able to get a little bit of slack out of that wire and make sure that it got inside the connector so it wasn't exposed like that. I'm sure it would have been fine, but that would have been a... The inspector might have had a problem with that, and it's not something that I did, so I had to fix it while I was there. Does that make sense? So, And it's the right thing to do. Uh, so here, I'm just using my needle nose pliers um, to get these conductors from the sub panel under the double pole 60 amp GE breaker here. And then I'd restore power to uh, all the circuits minus the junction box for the short circuit that, uh, I'm sorry, for the circuit that wasn't long enough. Uh, there's a junction box that needs to be completed above this panel here, and that's what I do next. So what we're looking at here is the area of the rim joist. If you see that PVC in the background there, that's where the service entrance cable comes in for the main breaker panel. And on the outside, I know where that is because uh, I see the LB where it enters, and I just want to drill a hole beside that to get my circuit from the outside into the panel here. And then I put into a junction box, and then that's where I'm going to start my PVC run. What I'm doing here is I'm making a knockout for a three-quarter inch connector that I'm going to use to attach to the 6-2 non-metallic sheath cable, the Romex cable, from the outside into the main breaker panel here. This is kind of dangerous with the shavings from the bit that I'm using a step bit, but I got it done. So the idea that I came up with was to drill a hole large enough to fit the three quarter inch Romex connector through and I'm essentially trying to aim the cable here into that knockout I just made in the panel. It was not an easy task and I wasn't able to aim it from here but that, that explains the large uh, hole that I made in the side of the house here. So now I'm going to go downstairs in the basement and try to fish it into the panel. This took about 15 minutes to get done, but eventually I got the cable through the knockout and then I was able to slide the lock nut over the conductors and make a connection with my connector, uh, making a code approved installation of this circuit entrance here. And then once I got the cables in the panel, I connected them to the uh, circuit breaker and left the circuit breaker off. So the next day when I came back, I wouldn't have to go down to the basement. It was supposed to rain, and it did rain, and it was wet, and I didn't want to track that into the house. So I did all my work inside, and then eventually I worked my way to the outside. Now here what I'm doing is I am installing a small, I want to say it's a 4-inch square junction box, but it's actually PVC, and it might be 3-inch. And this is just going to house my connectors uh, that are going to join the the non-metallic sheath cable I just ran to the panel and the PVC conductors and the PVC connector. Uh, this is where they're going to meet up here and splice together. So uh, what I did was I took a whole bunch of uh, duct seal behind the hole that I made. It was rather large and I squeezed it in there. And then when I tightened down the screws for the box, it kind of wedged in there, making a nice tight seal to keep the water out. You also have the lip of the cedar shake preventing any water from getting in there. Okay, so I'm back here the next day and I'm using the uh, PVC heater. And what I need to do is I need to come out of the box that I just mounted. And obviously I get to get around this window and then eventually try to find, try to... Um, Try to follow the service entrance cable layout that you see there for the service so it looks neat and presentable and so i at first i <clears throat> installed the conduit on the uh from the box up to the soffit but i didn't like the way it turned out it just did it kind of looked like crap so what i wound up doing was coming back later on and redoing it which uh, of course you'll see later so up here on the corner 
unfortunately the um the heater that i have is only i think like two and a half feet long so the amount of conduit that you can warm up and work with is only is limited to uh that length of two and a half feet so what i need to do here up this, up at the soffit is i need to bend a, a 90 degree turn and then a 45 and of course i can't do it so i need to put a couple of couplings that join the two pieces together which is what you're seeing here so basically it's just a big offset <clears throat> And then we'll come back and we'll strap it to the uh, to the cedar shakes here, the siding. I go all the way across the top of the house here, which is not easy. Uh, it would be easier if there was two extension ladders and I had a helper holding up the other end. If we had that, I think what I would do is I would use uh, the straps with two-inch screws and leave the straps um, unattached to the house and use them as hangers. You'll see that later on. So this way you could slide the full piece of PVC together. Uh, I want to say it's probably about 50 or 60 feet going across the soffit here. And so as you can imagine, uh, securing it up to the soffit was not easy. Uh, but as I got going, uh, I made the best of what I could. I made the best of what I had to work with. And in the end, it got done straight. The other thing that gets in your way is you can see those, I believe those are telephone lines coming in from the street. Uh, they're in the way of the ladder, so you got to duck the. You got to make sure that the ladder is underneath those, so you don't affect them and break them. And that could be uh, a pain in the neck. You'll see with the ladder here. See how you hit them? You got to get underneath. Wasn't a super pain in the ass, but it is kind of a pain in the ass when the wires are in the way like that. And you just got to be alert that they're there, so you don't hit them. And so here, what I'm doing is I'm setting up a uh, a clamp so to speak, to hold the conduit while I go back now and slide the piece of conduit through the clamp and hold it in position so I can come back later and secure the straps to the soffit. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. It helps out with, uh, with the ratings so people can find my video easier. I appreciate that. And if you're so inclined, please hit the subscribe button. That really helps. And the notification bell. Thank you, guys. I think we're coming up on 16,000 subscribers, and I can't say thank you enough. Whenever you join two pieces of PVC together, what you want to do is glue both ends if possible. Sometimes I don't even do that, but I try to. And once the coupling is on and attached to the other piece of conduit, you want to spin that conduit around so you spread the glue around inside the joint fitting. And what this will do, this will make a better um, connection between the two pieces of conduit with the PVC.
obviously this section over here, I'm standing on a roof, which makes it a lot easier so I can move around, get my straps in position. And for three quarter inch PVC straps, you should have a strap every five feet. And so on this particular run, I, I think I spaced them around. I eyeballed mo all of them. Uh, they're about four feet a piece. All right, so over here by the meter, this is the new piece I got to put in. Uh, that'll go from the junction box from the basement uh, for the rest of the run. And what I just did was ripped out the old piece. And now I'm just letting the warm piece here that I just bent uh, cool off and form and mold into position. Also wanted to use a an expansion coupling here. Uh, so when the sun beats on this on the back of the house, uh, the conduit doesn't become warped. You could argue it's not... Uh, um, required by the code here uh, and, I, I, and I have to read this section because they change that every seems like every cycle they change that section of the code but the expansion coupling basically prevents the PVC from warping okay and there's a chart in the NEC that shows you how much it'll move uh, I learned that when I got my license and I haven't referred to it since just know that the conduit moves and to account for it I had to go buy a new pair of PVC shears because it's such a great tool, but I'm trying to remember what happened to the last piece. I think I lost the nut that held the shear in position, and then I was also, I also lost the, um, the handle on the trigger, so that was a pain in the neck, so I just went out and bought another one. here I just got to uh, just do a little offset and it'll be and boom you're done you're good there
थोड़ी जो It's important to get this top screw right because the charger is actually going to hang from the top screw and then the two bottom screws kind of centers it. So take your time, 
and get it right. Sexy that is, brother. That is sexy, flexy. Some say it was 
Lemonade, but we know how the story goes. With a six string knife and a three rise pride, boy was a man before his time.